Here we have Yamato's 160th scale SV51 Alpha mass production type. It's from Macross Zero. This is the Alpha model and not the Gamma, which is seen in the show, which is flown by Nora and Ivanov. Front of the box, side of the box, back of the box, other side, inlay, and the massive SV51 Alpha. For a very large plane he comes with a very small sticker sheet. Here we have the SV-51 out of the box. It comes with what I think are two boosters, two missiles and four machine gun pods or missile pods. The cannon and the little pilot. Here we have the pilot. So it's just your standard little painted figure. The cannon, well it's actually only half the cannon because the top part sits on here, the handle bends down and that's pretty much it. So the booster pack, there's a little engine mold in there, I don't know if you can make it out. So nice with a bit of panel lining. Sidewinder or some sort of arm missile. The one thing I'll say about these is if you push too hard on the bottom of these, trying to get into the wing, uh, the plastic here signed of creaks, which can happen to mine, so I don't think that'll be going on at any time soon. Now these four are the same. Not much detailing, fairly plain. There's some nice detailing on the cockpit and the actual canopy. As you can see there's a white outline of a symbol and underneath it you can see the rip cord for the ejector seat. The chair and the ejector seat are very nicely done. The instrumentation panel also has decals applied which is nice. Just to give you an idea of how big this guy is, there's a 140th scale J, the 51, and the 160th scale J.
figure has a very interesting head sculpt. The neck joint's a bit weird, and it's a little floppy, and leads for some funny articulation. So a quick look at the shoulder articulation. The shoulder kind of pops in and out, so you can either have it straight or at an angle. But, unfortunately, the actual design of the mecha stops most of the rotation. So it would do a 360, the joint's capable, but the wing on the back just stops it. The arm then swivels underneath, plus, because of the way it transforms, the actual underneath the shoulder is hinged and swings, and then the elbow's on a ratchet. And it's got about 90 degree. If we take a look at the hips, you can see it's on a ball joint. And not only that, there's a fair bit of extend. You can pull in and out to that little bit further, if you wish. And it's the same thing on the other leg. Ball joint and it extends. So if we look at the leg articulation, it actually cracks forward here for gear walk. It twists here doing a 360, it bends backwards here like a normal, a normal leg and then the feet are pretty much unarticulated. So let's have a quick look at the actual gun. It's made up of two parts, this disconnects, there's a second one of these that's actually used to hold the legs together in plain mode. Tabs on the top here, go into the top of the gun, like so, and this can fold in and that's how it's stored underneath the plane. So it's fairly simple. I wish Yamato included more stands as standard with their models. One of the nice features of the SV51 Alpha is it comes with its own stand made of fairly solid plastic. Now it comes with three attachments. That's for plane mode, gear walk mode, and then robot mode or batroid mode. Here we have the SV51 on its stand. This guy is big. The SV51 is a nice plane, crappy chicken walk mode, and the robot mode's a bit gangly, but I like it because it really pops out. It's so tall. Aesthetically, the SV51 isn't the prettiest of planes, traditionally, but I like its hard edges and rough lines. It makes for a nice change. I also like the fact there isn't many decals and it isn't as busy as the Nora version. The VF0 and this model have a lot in common, being quite fiddly. The quality is okay on this model. The head's a bit loose, his left arm or right as you look at it. The wings on it are a bit floppy and are very temperamental. You can get them to sit in but it only takes the slightest little shake and will pop out. The missiles are very difficult to attach to the wings. Um, I pretty much broke the seam underneath one of the Sidewinder arm missiles. So it's not broken but you can see a crack which you couldn't originally see. So it's a bit disappointing that they're so stiff to get onto the wings. This is really one for you to make up your mind on. I like it but I wouldn't recommend it. So this was me with another review saying Slauncher.